Brought to you by Rodney's Publishing. It was a Wednesday, rent week. Not my favorite time of the month, let's be honest. But hey, bills gotta get paid. My routine was simple. Cash my paycheck at the Walmart in West Springfield, pay my landlord in person, he didn't trust online payments, old school dude, grab a burger at that greasy spoon down the street. Routine, predictable, boring. Little did I know, tonight routine was out the window. I parked my trusty Honda Civic, a 98, some rust, but she got me from A to B, grabbed my paycheck and headed inside. The familiar fluorescent hum of the Walmart greeted me. I joined the queue, the cashier barely looked up, and boom, money exchanged hands. Rent money, check. One less thing to worry about. I was in a good mood. I even treated myself to a double cheeseburger. Life was good, or as good as it gets when you're living paycheck to paycheck. I finished my burger, crumpled up the wrapper, and headed back to my car. That's when the night took a turn. As I approached my car, I noticed flashing lights, blue and red, reflecting off the wet asphalt. The colors danced in the puddles, creating an almost surreal atmosphere. My heart skipped a beat. Did someone ding my car? The thought of dealing with insurance and repairs flashed through my mind. I thought, already mentally calculating how much I could afford for repairs. The recent expenses had already stretched my budget thin. But as I got closer, I realized the flashing lights weren't aimed at my car. Relief washed over me momentarily. They were right behind it. The realization brought a new wave of anxiety. A police cruiser parked inches from my rear bumper. The proximity was unnerving. Two officers stood beside their car, watching me approach. Their expressions were unreadable in the dim light. They were both young, probably fresh out of the academy. Their crisp uniforms and serious demeanor added to the tension. One was writing something in a notepad, the other was talking into his radio. Their actions seemed routine, yet the situation felt anything but. I stopped a few feet away, unsure of what to do. The uncertainty gnawed at me. My mind raced. Did I park illegally? I tried to recall if there were any signs I might have missed. Was there a break-in at the Walmart? The thought of a crime scene so close to my car was unsettling. Did they mistake my car for someone else's? The possibilities seemed endless and none of them good. One of the officers looked up from his notepad. His gaze was steady, assessing. Sir, are you the owner of this vehicle? He asked, his voice neutral, professional. The question hung in the air, heavy with implications. I nodded, my mouth suddenly dry. The simple act of confirming ownership felt like a confession. Can you please step closer and provide your license, registration, and proof of insurance? He continued. The request was standard, yet it felt invasive. I fumbled for my wallet, my hands shaking slightly. The pressure of the situation made even the simplest tasks difficult. This was not part of the plan. I had only intended to make a quick stop at the store, not get involved in a police encounter. I handed over my documents, hoping everything was in order. The officer examined them carefully, his expression giving nothing away. After what felt like an eternity, he nodded and handed them back. You're all set, he said, his tone still professional but slightly warmer. I sighed in relief, the tension slowly ebbing away. Thank you, I managed to say my voice shaky but sincere. The officers got back into their car and drove away, the flashing lights fading into the distance. The parking lot returned to its usual quiet. I stood there for a moment, reflecting on the experience. It was a stark reminder of how quickly a situation can escalate and how important it is to stay calm and composed. Finally, I got into my car and drove away, the night's events replaying in my mind. It was an encounter I wouldn't soon forget. I handed the officer my documents, my fingers trembling slightly as I passed them over. The weight of the situation was beginning to sink in, and I could feel the tension building in my shoulders. My heart pounding in my chest, each beat echoing in my ears like a drum. I could feel the sweat starting to form on my forehead, a clear sign of my growing anxiety. He took them, his face expressionless, and examined them closely. His eyes scanned each page meticulously, as if searching for something specific. The longer he looked, the more my anxiety grew. 
The silence stretched on, each tick of the clock amplifying my anxiety. It felt like an eternity before he finally looked up, his expression still unreadable. I could barely breathe, waiting for him to speak. Sir, he said, his voice calm but firm, a tone that did little to ease my nerves. I could tell he had delivered this kind of news many times before. I'm afraid there's a problem. His words hung in the air, heavy and foreboding. According to our records, your driver's license is suspended. The words suspended seemed to echo in my mind, each repetition making it harder to believe. Suspended? My blood ran cold. Suspended? That couldn't be right. I had always been so careful, so diligent about following the rules. I'd never had so much as a parking ticket, let alone anything that would warrant a suspension. My driving record was spotless, a point of personal pride. There must be some mistake, I stammered, my voice cracking with panic. I could feel my hands starting to shake, the reality of the situation hitting me hard. I've never been suspended before. The words felt foreign in my mouth, as if saying them would somehow make them true. The officer raised an eyebrow, unconvinced. His skepticism was palpable, and it only added to my growing sense of dread. I understand, sir, he said patiently, his tone suggesting he had heard similar protests many times before. But we have to go by what's in the system. His words were final, leaving no room for argument. Until this is sorted out, you're not allowed to operate this vehicle. He paused, then added, his tone softening slightly. And because your registration is also flagged due to the suspension, we have no choice but to take further action. We're going to have to tow your car. The sight of the tow truck approaching felt like a punch to the gut. This was really happening. Tow my car? My head spun. This was a nightmare. I couldn't believe this was happening to me. I felt a wave of helplessness wash over me. The situation was completely out of my control, and there was nothing I could do to change it. The officer's words echoed in my mind, a constant reminder of the reality I was now facing. Desperate, I pulled out my phone and called my lawyer, hoping for some kind of miracle. As I explained the situation, my voice wavered, the fear and uncertainty clear in every word. My lawyer listened patiently, his calm demeanor a stark contrast to my own panic. He assured me that he would look into it immediately, but his words did little to ease my mind. Hanging up, I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself. I knew this was just the beginning of a long and stressful process, but I was determined to clear my name and get to the bottom of this. As I watched my car being towed away, I felt a mix of emotions, fear, frustration, and a steely resolve. This wasn't over, not by a long shot. I would fight this, and I would win. Section 4. Insurance Confusion. A Comedy of Errors. The next few hours were a blur of phone calls, paperwork, and frustration. It felt like I was trapped in a never-ending loop of bureaucratic red tape, each call leading to more confusion and less clarity. I called my insurance company, desperate for answers. My heart raced as I navigated through the automated menu, hoping to reach a human being who could help me make sense of this mess. They told me my policy was active, no issues on their end. For a moment, I felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe this was all just a misunderstanding that could be easily resolved. Then I called the DMV, bracing myself for their legendary hold music. The minutes ticked by, each one feeling like an eternity, as I listened to the same repetitive tune over and over. After what felt like an eternity, I finally got through to a representative. My relief was short-lived, however, as she delivered the news that my license was indeed suspended. She told me my license was indeed suspended due to an unpaid insurance lapse. My mind raced as I tried to comprehend how this could have happened. Unpaid insurance lapse? I exclaimed, incredulous. How could there be an unpaid lapse when I had been diligent about paying my premiums on time? That's impossible. I've been paying my premiums on time. I felt a surge of frustration as I tried to explain this to the representative. The DMV representative, clearly reading from a script, informed me that they had received a notification from my insurance company about a lapse in coverage a few months back. I was baffled. How could there be such a discrepancy? Armed with this new information, I called my insurance company again. This time, I was determined to get to the bottom of this. 
This time, I got transferred to three different departments, each more unhelpful than the last. Each transfer felt like a step further into a labyrinth of confusion. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I was connected to a supervisor. My patience was wearing thin, but I held on to the hope that she could provide some answers. She listened patiently to my story, then put me on hold for what felt like an hour. The silence on the other end of the line was deafening, each passing second amplifying my anxiety. When she returned, her tone was apologetic. I could sense that she had discovered something significant. Sir, she said, it seems there was a clerical error on our end. My heart skipped a beat as I processed her words. We accidentally reported your policy as lapsed when it wasn't. Relief washed over me, but it was tinged with frustration at the unnecessary ordeal I had been put through. I thanked her for resolving the issue, but couldn't help but wonder how many others had faced similar bureaucratic nightmares. A clerical error? That's it? A simple, stupid mistake had turned my life upside down. I was furious, but also relieved. At least there was an explanation. The supervisor assured me they would rectify the situation immediately. They would send a notification to the DMV clearing my name. Easy, right? Wrong. The DMV, it turned out, was not so easily swayed. They insisted on seeing a written confirmation from the insurance company, with original signatures and all. This meant waiting for the mail, which could take days, maybe even weeks. In the meantime, my car remained impounded, racking up storage fees by the hour. To make matters worse, the DMV informed me that even after they received the confirmation, I would have to pay a reinstatement fee to get my license back. The fee? A hefty sum that I simply didn't have. I was trapped in a bureaucratic nightmare, a Kafkaesque labyrinth with no way out. The consequences of this ordeal extended far beyond the immediate inconvenience. My car was my lifeline. I needed it to get to work, to buy groceries, to live my life. Without it, I was stranded. I had to call my boss and explain the situation, knowing full well that missing work meant losing precious income. As if things couldn't get any worse, my landlord called, demanding the rent. I explained my predicament, hoping for a little understanding. But he was a man of strict principles, and deadlines were deadlines. The threat of eviction loomed large. The stress was unbearable. I was constantly worried, constantly on edge. The bills were piling up, and I had no way to pay them. My credit score, which I had worked so hard to build, was taking a nosedive. This wasn't just about a towed car anymore. I appreciate your time for listening. Stay tuned for more shorts from at Rodney's Publishing YouTube. Further inquirers, click the link in my bio below, and don't forget to tap the top right screen for more. Leave a comment.